We mentioned we were a, a night launch. We launched at about 2.30 in the morning in Florida. The uh, shuttle is just gorgeous with the lights lit up around it. About uh, four hours prior, we're in the suiting room putting on helmets and uh, gloves and boots and doing pressure checks. There's Box. Um, Garrett's getting ready. He's, he's a pretty serious guy. Hiding behind the uh, visor there is, is Bob finishing up his pressure checks to cow. He's quite relaxed and ready to go. Our resident veterinarian, Rick, and uh, he had plenty of animals to take care of on this flight. Here's Mike, um, our uh, flight engineer, and there's Endeavor waiting for us, starting to vent and make some noise. We walk down the hallway in crew quarters and uh, go down this elevator, uh, heading out to this uh, crew transport vehicle. It's like a motorhome that takes you out to the launch pad, walking like ducks with uh, diapers on and everything underneath there. Um, again, Endeavor's waiting for us, and we're going to let the uh, Endeavor video launcher. audio go here. Go ahead, Mike. Okay, Dom, uh, vehicle's in great shape. The weather is go. In fact, it should be an interesting uh, flight for you to punch through the clouds tonight. So on behalf of the KFC launch team, I'd like to wish you good luck. Godspeed, and we'll see you back here in 16 days. Well, Mike, you just made people smile around the world, and you've got seven smiling faces on board here. And for JAXA, we'd like to say konnichiwa. Unbelievable. What you're seeing here. And what you're seeing here are some of the camera views that are mounted on the solid rocket boosters and on the external tank itself. This is from one solid rocket booster looking to the other. Absolutely unbelievable. In just a moment, you'll see Dom's initial maneuvering, and this is taken from a uh, camera on the external tank as he's maneuvering from the external tank during ET separation. Just a few minutes after main engine cutoff, we saw a sunrise, and then we start doing a series of, of burns. Here's Garrett and, uh, and Rick uh, feeling the acceleration of the orbital maneuvering system. This is the flight day two uh, inspection of our thermal protection system, the tiles and the reinforced carbon-carbon. And then the third day is rendezvous day. So it's a Friday three, time for rendezvous with the space station. Now we are approaching the space station from below. And uh, we are doing a special maneuver called the uh, Alba Pichi maneuver, or uh, backflip. So during this maneuver, the space station crew is taking pictures of the shuttle tiles to make sure that uh, we don't have uh, any damage. So during this maneuver, the space station is rising over the Pearl Bay. It's a spectacular view. Now we are going into the last section of the rendezvous, and the Dom is flying the space shuttle very slowly to the station. This is a view from the centerline camera. The speed is about 0.1 foot per second. We are going to make a contact, and we got a very successful rendezvous. We are happy campus making a high five. <laughs> Endeavor arriving. Thank you, that's the sweetest call I've ever heard. Thank you very much. So we got the hatches open and we started coming on board. We thought Peggy was just happy to see Garrett, but actually she was demonstrating her pile driver maneuver. <laughs> we brought some gifts uh, aboard for Peggy, some candy, some clothing, some jewelry. There were hugs all around. One of the things that happens on these uh, really busy missions is right after docking, you get a quick briefing and have to get to work. Here is uh, Box and I as uh, we get ready to pull the uh, platform that uh, Dexter lived on until it was constructed and moved over to the space station. 
So we've uh, headed through the hatch and uh, got everything set it up and pressed right into our robotics activities. And here uh, Box is uh, accomplishing the final uh, maneuver, um, driving this uh, boat of an SLP over onto the uh, POA. Okay, Garrett and I are getting ready for the EVA the first night with our pre-breathe here. We're in our magic masks. Uh, that morning, uh, I'm first out, uh, get out, see the cameras, and I can actually see the guys, wave at them a bit. Our first up is to get down to the JLP and get the CBM covers off to allow the module to be uh, put on the top of station and pressurized. And uh, you can see Garrett here is in the process of disconnecting some power leads to the JLP. Did a great job there, and he's, this is his first EVA, and he's a pro. Uh, after that, uh, Dom and Takao were moving the JLP up. Uh, we're out in the uh, SLP working on Mr. Dexter. We talked about giving him his hands, pulling our tools out. You can see down low in the right there as all the robotics uh, action is going on. And then later, uh, myself here on the arm with Garrett here taking uh, some pictures. And then we're removing uh, the OTCM and putting that uh, in place on the arm, uh, getting ready for the EVAs the next day with uh, Mike. And I'll turn this over to robotics. This is an exciting moment for Japan. We are using the Space Shuttle robotic arm to move the uh, Japanese Space Station module Kibo or JLP to uh, Node 2. And uh, we are getting closer to uh, attach it. And the one Friday five. small step for one Japanese astronaut, but a giant entrance for Japan to a greater and newer space program. I love Neil Armstrong very much. And once we open the hatch, we are working hard inside. Also, we are playing hard. I had a chance to throw a boomerang. It flew you very well. On flight day six, Rick and I went outside for EVA2, and our primary task that day was to attach the arms onto Mr. Dexter's body. So we had some free float tasks that we worked on initially. Here's Rick working with our pistol grip tool on a bolt there, and uh, with a ratchet wrench here, uh, making some attachments. And then uh, here's Rick attaching the foot restraint to the arm so that he could be anchored in the arm and do some work from the arm. Next, uh, we started to work together to get the first arm off of the pallet. We had a little trouble getting the uh, connectors off there. Here's Rick using a pry bar, uh, which we weren't planning to use. This is a normal way to use a pry bar. We finally got that bolt out. And then here's another use for a pry bar. <laughs> we got this second, uh, we call them expandable diameter fasteners. He got that arm off. Here he is pulling it out. And uh, we're going to temporarily stow this one. He was giving me some hand signals. We're going to tempor temporarily stow this one on the uh, side of the SLP. And then we'll go to work on the second one. The second arm. Rick is pulling the second arm out with the help of the robotics guys. Box inside, driving him around. He hands that arm off to me. Uh, you can also see on this D-handle real quickly some bandaging because it had some damage on it we had to repair. While I'm holding that arm, uh, Rick is pulling the body up, rotating it up out of the pallet so that we can attach the arms. Another good job by the robotics guys inside. Here's uh, Rick attaching one of the arms, putting that fastener in there. And this is what the uh, Dexter looked like after we got the arms on. Well, in between uh, EVAs one and two, or two, two and three, we had a little bit of a break. So this is uh, some video taken inside the <laughs> inside the stack. We got everybody to eventually show us a dive. I think some of the best dives were done by the veterans, like Rick. All right, to Cal, there's he's giving us a half gainer. There's Garrett, and finally the winning dive by Dom. This is the uh, beginning of EVA3, finishing up uh, construction of the uh, SPDM uh, Dexter, I guess. And uh, you can see uh, one of the components that I've just passed off to Rick there, and we uh, later attach those both onto, onto Dexter. Uh, after this uh, comes uh, one of the first of uh, many opportunities I had to look at myself in a mirror, I guess. That's what they're accusing me of while Rick uh, pounded on me. 
Um, this is uh, Rick actually having an opportunity to take some closeout photos of the uh, SPDM after we've uh, completed the construction. Here's another opportunity for me to look at myself in a mirror as I <laughs> climb across on the uh, SLP platform. And uh, while I was doing that, uh, Rick started uh, transferring some hardware from the shuttle over to the space station. A good look of uh, the uh, robo geeks here as they're working inside. They've got me on the end of the uh, swatter, so to speak, so I had to be nice. They're bringing me into the payload bay now so I can start the ORU, the orbital replacement unit changeouts. I started with the yaw joint, which is a, a yaw joint on a large piece of metal uh, that's a spare in case it's needed uh, uh, for the arm. And then we started with uh, some electronics boxes, DCSUs, move those from the payload bay to the ESP or storage platform on the station. There's a nice picture of Bob up there on Columbus now, and you can see me flying right by him uh, as he's working on the missies. I get some great shots of him. And uh, it was a great day, and uh, we're finishing up with Peggy in the airlock. Here's a view of the completed Dexter before we attached it to the lab. Uh, did a great job putting it together by the guys outside. We we're halfway through, so it's time to celebrate over in the Russian segment. We had a multinational meal with Japanese and Russian food. Go with Japanese if you get a choice. Um, <laughs> the, uh, a view of the mid-deck uh, where we're uh, exercising and keeping things uh, not too cluttered. There's a lot of things stowed behind a net. Um, your kitchen table is, is wherever you want to make it. Guys are upside down floating and eating, and, uh, and it's really enjoyable to do that. We ate almost all our dinners together and most of our lunches, and uh, we had a great time together um, eating or working. A couple of Caltech grads together celebrating that fact, and uh, that was marking our halfway point. Flight day nine, we did uh, EVA four. Here's Bob coming out of the hatch for that uh, EVA. Uh, primary uh, task was the tile repair, but we had some uh, work that we did initially. Bob went and swapped out an RPCM, and I worked on a uh, electrical connector here that proved to be a little testy. We got to work, we set up our tile repair sample kit. We started to flow this goo that we call it, STA-54. We tamped it down into all these samples, uh, closed up the kit, and then uh, played follow the leader, uh, brachiating down the lab into the payload bay where Bob very gingerly uh, stowed the sample bo box into this stowage bin here. We had some cleanup tasks afterwards, uh, so we uh, kind of broke off and went our separate ways here. Here's uh, me pulling off one of the socks on one of the hands uh, of Dexter and Bob. Got a chance to work on that uh, connector that was uh, not proving to uh, come off for us. And then Bob didn't want to pass up one more opportunity to look in a mirror. <laughs> so we uh, finished up EVA4, headed back inside. So inside here, I'm uh, giving a little bit of description about what I was doing in that mirror, I guess. And uh, as we uh, had a little bit of a break before pressing on into EVA 5, you can see Mike and I uh, suiting up again for the fifth and final EVA. Mike's uh, got the hatch open here and uh, one of the great opportunities to go out in a daylight pass and see the earth right away before uh, I come out behind him and uh, he helps me get some tools on myself before we uh, head up to start to uh, putting in the system that would provide power to the uh, OBSS, the sensor boom that uh, was going to be left behind on the space station. Um, Garrett and Box really helped us out a lot, uh, making it uh, go smoothly with uh, passing off that boom to us when we were ready for it. Um, you can see Mike and I uh, working into positions both at the top of the truss, the top of the world, so to speak. And luckily, you can see that red light come on up there in the top, and there was uh, at least much rejoicing uh, on board the uh, space station at that point. You can see after we've uh, gotten it powered, we kind of had to feed the cable out uh, during the uh, robotics maneuver. And you can see the uh, boom moving there as I uh, feed that cable out. So uh, Box was uh, really patient with me as I, uh, as I fed that cable out. You can see uh, the boom is almost in final position. And uh, he's, Box has passed it off to Mike and I and backed away. And we'll see uh, Mike accomplish the uh, final attach point of that boom to the space station where it's now living and waiting for the 124 crew to come up and use it. After that, uh, we pressed on to some uh, additional tasks. Uh, Mike got to go over and work on one of the uh, solar array joints while I went over and worked on the uh, recalcitrant uh, Missy experiment with a hammer and uh, got that installed. 
before we uh, pressed back into the airlock and uh, completed the uh, fifth and final uh, EVA. Our mission is drawing to close. And we are leaving our mission patch on board the space station. <laughs> and it's uh, our farewell to the space station. And Garrett wanted to come back with us, but Peggy grabbed him back. He's uh, a lucky guy. We had a wonderful 12 days on board the space station. The space station is just a giant toy box. It's a great place to play and work. And we miss uh, the space station a lot. Well, this is bad shirt day. Uh, Dom asked, uh, what do you want to uh, wear on undock day? And I said I wanted to look like that tropical plant. But this is a very exciting time for a pilot uh, where uh, Dom uh, has the bravery to let me take the controls for a little while uh, and basically undo uh, what he did about 12 days prior. We back away to about 600 feet. And uh, the whole maneuver, backing away uh, to 600 feet and then flying 360 degrees all the way around the space station, uh, it takes about an hour and a half. So we actually experience a sunrise and a sunset during that period of time. So you'll see both daylight and nighttime uh, views of the space station. This is a breathtaking view of the backdrop of the Earth below. And then at night, uh, we're starting to get further away after a separation burn ready for uh, the next couple days for re-entry. This is the payload bay doors closing just hours uh, prior to landing, and we spent the next couple hours getting our suits on and converting the uh, space shuttle, uh, as Mike said, to a glider. Endeavor Houston, you're on energy approaching the hack. No changes to winds or weather. Nominal ship deploy. That's the view looking out the heads-up display at night. I see the runway. Houston Endeavor, field in sight. Glad somebody sees it. <laughs> but the uh, imagery from the ground is just thermal imagery. And uh, here's approaching the runway Ballpark. at about 50 feet. Box put out that parachute, we stopped, and within about 45 minutes we were outside, smiles on our face, looking uh, at each other, helping us each other stand up so we wouldn't fall over. But uh, that is one happy, satisfied crew with a, a great, great mission behind us.